Qué tranza el buen Edwin. ¿Cómo andas, men? ¿Qué dice la mala vida? Sí, hombre, ya sé. Sí estaba viendo las fotos y todo eso y... Ni hablar, ya será para el próximo año. Si se puede. Let's hope. Layers. Sí, sí vi los videos y vi todas las fotos. Una leyenda, Luli. Estuvo mejor el de este año que el del año pasado, ¿no? Por lo que vi. Hello everyone, for uh, those of you joining, um, this is the English stream, the past the scope thing, so I'll just be doing um, a couple more things on this guy, the color I'm doing with Oscar. Let's see what, uh, what comes out of this. No, pero sí fue un montón de gente más este año, ¿no, Edwin? Comparado con el pasado. Bueno, al menos en las fotos parecía como que sí. Hey Jekatl, ¿qué onda? Sí, sí supe que... Que iba a andar por allá De hecho sé que le gustó bastante Que regresó como muy contento Entonces es bueno Nadie puede vencer a Oli Es una maldita leyenda So right now, what I'm trying to do here is to just, because uh, I was noticing, I'm gonna turn this tool off so I can explain what I'm thinking. Um, I was looking at the silhouette, like I, I really like the shapes, but I'm, I'm not super happy with the silhouette yet. So like for example, this area, I think can be improved and maybe the head a little bit, I don't know. But also like all of this here, it's very empty. So I'll be adding stuff to here. Like, I don't know exactly how or what it will be. Like I'm thinking some kind of um, like flesh feathers, not kind of like feathery feathers, but like fleshy feathers to integrate them. 
to the body. I, I'm just, I don't know. Let's try this. Hey, Santiago. Thanks. Glad you like it. Trying to see like what type of um, how would like a like a feather like a fleshy feather would look here or like what would the design be like the, the general shapes of this thing. The most important thing is that it looks good on a silhouette uh, level. So we'll try to um, aim for that. How are you guys doing today? How's life been? Hey Santiago, este, no estamos usando concept, el concept, el diseño no lo estamos inventando conforme. Vamos trabajándole, no hay concept. Es, es divertido, pero es peligroso al mismo tiempo. No, no te creas, es, es cool. Se presta como para hacer ideas padres. So maybe, I'm thinking maybe this would be like the top one, like closer to here. I'm sort of having a, like an intermediate one.
¿Qué onda, Oscar? Sí, hablo español. ¿Cómo andas? Hablo español, pero este stream es el... Tengo dos streams, uno en español y en inglés, y este es el de inglés. Pero siempre termino hablando los dos. So... Um, there's always like a lot of crossover between Spanish speaking people and English speaking people. So even though I'm, I'll be speaking like mostly English, if you guys want to comment in Spanish, it's fine. And yeah. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Sometimes I just like get lost here in the in the shapes. Feel free to comment in any language you want, as long as I understand it, it's okay. Don't there is man. francés, pero ni me vas a entender. Así podría, pero mi francés es horrible. Todavía no. En alemán sí estaría chido. Nomás necesito practicarle un poquillo antes, pero sí estaría cool. Tal vez algún día. Ay, qué buena onda. Yo también igual soy del DF. Del buen defectuoso. Sí, échalo, men. Ahorita que acaba el stream, lo checo. Dale. Sí, es que este, no sé si alcancen a ver en la. Según yo sí se ve en el stream, pero tengo el chat, la ventana del chat. Y está jalando los comentarios de Twitch, YouTube y Facebook. Entonces por acá ando con el buen Edwin igual cotorreando el, el ando en Twitch. Entonces está chido porque puedo verlos todos y e igual la gente que lo está viendo puede checar lo que está poniendo todo el mundo, entonces está cool. So I don't exactly know what are these supposed to be, but like kind of fleshy feathers, I guess. Yeah, I'm just um, thinking of like the silhouette that they give. Hey Frank, what's up? How are you, man? I 
think I think this um, this approach or like this this idea of um, trying to add things will work out. Just need to figure the placement of his these things. Órale, qué buena onda. De qué es la historia que estás escribiendo. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it, man. So, like, all of this every one of these has to be oh wait it's just the wrong brush slightly different and the other ones No, pues se ve que sí está intenso. Qué buena onda que te estás aventando ese proyecto, qué chido. La neta es padre. Yo ahorita extraño bastante hacer proyectos personales, he estado súper full. Y nada más quiero terminar unos proyectos de trabajo y ya regresar a darle chido a los proyectos personales porque se extraña un montón. Y está padre que tengas como esos. esas ideas, ¿no? De, de crear cosas, está muy chido. So some some things that I always do is um, to rotate the model as much as possible, because I like to see everything from every possible angle. I like to really um, also I like I was I was working in orthographic also though. I like to um, to really take a good look at, at everything that's going on and um, really explore it. So, not sure if I might go and just scale them a little bit. Oh, 
Ah, qué buena onda. Sí, pues suena chido. Este tipo de proyectos, la verdad es que si son... O sea, mientras más grande sea el proyecto, pues más colaboración necesitas. Es lo normal. Try to put this in here, like uh, in the meantime, to um, connect it later. ¿Vas a publicar como novela gráfica o algo así o como cuál es la tirada? Just gonna give it a little bit of uh, more volume here. To this thing. Hey Creepy, ¿qué onda? Buenas noches. ¿Cómo te va, man? So lots of uh, Spanish speaking people tonight, which is cool. I'm really struggling right now because I had like the biggest lunch today, so I've been like sleepy for the past few hours. I'm drinking lots of water. to um, try and keep awake. Qué buena onda. Novela gráfica, corto animado y juego de mesa. Órale. Pues mucho éxito con tu proyecto. Me suena que está... Eh, que, que abarca bastante. Entonces, te deseo mucho éxito en toda la empresa de aventarte ese super proyecto eh, Creepy, ando haciendo un... este... es una colaboración que estoy haciendo con Oscar el nombre del stream es Past the Sculpt y estamos... Eh, la idea es esculpir algo entre los dos un rato yo en mis streams y un rato él en sus streams y ahí nos la llevamos de ida y de vuelta y como que con este no planeamos nada simplemente empecé a sketchar algo y luego Oscar le vio como cara de pollo. Yo puse costas como brazos, como las alas. Y le vio como cara de pollo. Y de ahí lo decidimos hacer como un pollo mutante. Entonces en eso vamos. Muchas gracias Oscar, creepy. Este, no, la, no creo. La verdad es que este tipo de cosas, o sea, no, no está planeado para ser animado. De hecho, si ven la topología, o sea, es, es, es topología de, de Cibri Mesh, es topología para esculpir. No tiene un flujo para, para animación, no está cuidado para eso. Es más para esculpir nada más. O sea, la idea es hacerlo, hacer una escultura cool y ya, ¿no? No hay... En mis otros streams, eh, los que son en español, estoy trabajando un personaje que sí es para producción, que sí planeo eh, con topología así como para animación y eventualmente rigarlo y esas cosas. Entonces, 
Igual si quieren calar eh, esos, esos streams Alterno entre una semana en inglés y otra semana en español En teoría este, 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 esta semana es en inglés Se supone que ahorita Pero no hay bronca So I was just explaining that uh, um, Creepy was asking if, uh, if I'm gonna be rigging this guy And the answer is no Because it's just like a sculpt uh, for fun Just like a concept scope um, And even the topology doesn't work for animation purposes We didn't plan it for, for animation purposes It would have to be like really redone and, and sculpted in a pose That's um, much more suitable for animation Ah, oh, okay, perfect Yeah, I know a, lo a lot of people actually speak English but There's um, there's always someone who doesn't, so I, I try to just like answer questions in in both, just in case. I want this this sort of thing, this part like to look like bony, but sort of uh, fleshy as well. ¿Qué onda? Y remix. Um, okay, so he's asking if um, he wants to apply for the sculpt off in uh, the summit next year. And what do I recommend for like leveling up? Leveling up. I would say like the sculpt off is a very specific type of uh, competition in which two things are king, like design and speed. So I would work on those things like um, get really good at ZBrush, really really good. So so like you're able to use the full potential or like a a great potential of the tool. Uh, like you know most of the basic brush or like all of the basic brushes, most of the functions, and the other thing is just like practice a lot of ideas. Um, For the for the sculpt off, like they don't they don't like um, they don't get the, the the theme of that year until like a couple of months before. So it's really important to like come up with a good idea for um, for whatever theme it's there's gonna be. But the thing is, you know you don't know that. So like practice in, in general having good ideas. I know it's like much easier said than done like oh just have good ideas it's not it's not always easy and um, but I think practicing um, design practicing things like um, concept art or like concept sculpting like things like this for example this is like a concept scope practicing things like this uh, strengthens the the creative muscle I think for coming up with better and faster um, creative choices at least that's what happened to me like I, I won't I wouldn't I'm not gonna say that like I'm like a super expert or like a great designer because I'm not but I find that it's easier for me to come up with ideas if I practice these things like this concept scope type of things um, but like you only have like three hours so You better be fast. That's also like another thing. You have to be fast. But it'll be so so cool um, to see. Like I'm really excited for this year. I have a, a lot of friends who are participating, and I'm gonna be there uh, in the summit. So it will be super cool to um, to actually see what the theme for this year is and what everybody does in the end. Yeah, I know that the, I, that's why I try to do it in Spanish and English. So it's no worries there. Uh, something for new animators. Um, Like animator, do you mean like actual animator, like a character animator? 
Um, because, like, I'm not an animator, but I have animator friends, and uh, I, I talk with them a fair bit, and, and I know what their struggles are. And also, like, I used to do some animation for work. Like, I was a generalist before, so not much, but some. So, like, I know a little bit about animation, but I would say... Um, observation? That's, like, uh, regardless of, of, like, if you're an animator or, or, like, a concept artist or a modeler or a texture artist, doesn't matter. Observation is is always uh, the most important thing for an artist to have, and like with animators, especially because you're working um, like most of the time off of uh, references and acting and stuff like that. You have to be really good at um, observing other people and movement and weight and uh, poses and stuff like that silhouettes and the other thing is um, to always be mindful of studying the fundamentals of whatever you're doing study always the fundamentals like don't don't think um, that you can take shortcuts because you really can't and don't think also like uh, like you can sacrifice quality for speed like it's really important to get the basics right and the fundamentals can be always different between different disciplines so for an animator the fundamentals might be like the the 12 principles of disney animation or um, things like weight and uh, uh, squash and stretch uh, staging on the shot things like that so i would say yeah focus on that Focus on the fundamentals and uh, what was the other thing? And on observation and whatever you do, you, you're going to be fine. That's the most important thing that I've I've discovered or like not discovered because or like observed on, on other friends and myself and um, other people in the industry. ¿Qué onda, Oscar? Este, visitarme, pues si le caes a Montreal, acá te recibo, men. Acá ando en Montreal, chambeando. Si quieres, si tienes preguntas así específicas como eh, de chamba y eso si quieres saca la, la verborrea en el inbox y ahorita que termine el, el stream lo leo con calma y ya este y ahí cotorreamos un rato siento que es más fácil no I would say like if you're still not um, at school, creepy, I would say maybe, well, I don't know, because everybody's different. But for me, it wasn't until I was at school that I decided that I like modeling, sculpting, texturing, like things, uh, characters in general, um, because I tried different things. I was not sure at the beginning. I tried animation. I tried uh, like illustration, 2D illustration. So I don't know, like it depends. Uh, there's also a lot of people that already know the field they want to specialize in. So it might be your case, I don't know. But um, like be open-minded because you never know if something else will grab your attention. Um, 
Lighting is really cool and it's something that I neglected for a long time so I'm, I'm just learning it like uh, like really in this past few years so that's something cool and yeah it also depends on like how your brain works I think because you I think you tend to normally like gravitate to things that you're good at and then you start to like specialize in those things and become even better and so for example in my case um, whenever I just like I see like a movie or a game or sculpture or anything like that my brain always focuses on the shapes and the forms and the anatomy and the silhouette and things like that and I have to make like a conscious effort to uh, think about the lighting for example like in a shot I really have to think like oh I have to watch out for the lighting to pay attention to that otherwise it just like it passes by so and, and and I don't have to to make any effort to just like oh like the anatomy here is really cool or oh these shapes are really interesting or oh the silhouette here works really really nice so that that also can be like a, a thing no you you don't choose the the thing the thing chooses you in a way I studied in Mexico I studied animation and digital art uh, got my degree and then started working there and uh, I worked in, in I was really uh, fortunate to, to, to have worked in uh, in different things uh, different fields no not feels like or I don't know how to say it like um, I've done work for films uh, TV commercials uh, internet commercials, uh, 3D printing, worked in video games also. Um, I haven't worked in VFX like per se, but kind of almost, I don't know, like I was also a teacher later on. Freelancer sculptor. Yeah, I've been like I've been doing a lot of different things. Um, I'm trying to like recently. I'm trying to focus more on on uh, uh, like uh, improving my skills uh, when it comes to like characters, all the character pipeline like modeling, sculpting, UV mapping, texturing, shading, uh, even like fur and clothing, rigging, everything that has to do with characters except animation. I really want to focus on that and, uh, and keep sculpting. Like I really, really like sculpting. And uh, unfortunately, like in the industry, it's something a little bit uh, difficult, I won't lie, because the market is oversaturated with um, with ZBrush cowboys, as the guys from uh, Flip Normals call them, like people who only use ZBrush and nothing else. And um, since I work in, in production, like in, in film, in animation movies, and um, like yeah, people who only know how to use ZBrush don't really have a place in the production pipeline, except for like maybe concept art. Um, or like in, in very specific bigger productions, maybe just like creature sculpt or, or or face sculpt or I don't know, things like that. But for most people and for most studios, you have to be at least a, a decent modeler as well. So I really like sculpting, but uh, I realize that like for to stay current in the industry, you also have to be a, a, like a well-round artist. So that's why I want to be like a a really well like character generalist in a way but also like keep sculpting like I really like just like wacky creatures like this uh, play with shapes and all that yeah it is possible where are you from are you also from Mexico it is possible like I would say 
I know it's possible in Mexico. I know it's possible in certainly in Brazil. Uh, I know it's possible in Colombia. I know it's also possible in Chile, in Peru. Um, not all, like most most countries in Latin America. I think it's possible. The industries are small, but they're growing, and um, that's a good thing. Uh, so yeah, it is it is totally possible. Like there's, uh, I don't know if you uh, if you know the Pixelatl festival who just uh, ended like last week, and I would say like 80% of the industry in Mexico, all the people I know, were there, and it's no joke. Like everybody was there, and. People from animation, from video games, from web design, from illustration, from uh, 2D animation, 3D animation, um, collectibles, uh, television. So, like, there's a lot of work, um, but it's still like a small uh, industry, and it's still in in the infancy. I would say, a lot of things like are still growing. Um, maybe there are not many studios as like in other places like uh, US or Canada for example or Europe but andabas por allá mi remix yo fui los dos años pasados pero este año no pude ir se me dio mucho coraje pero ni hablar era escoger entre el pixel atl o el summit y pues en este caso preferí mejor ir al summit que ya es en dos semanas so yeah, th there's, there's a, it's totally possible to work in Mexico. It's just maybe not as glamorous or as um, maybe not the type of job that you would like in the beginning. But I'd say it's really uh, totally 100% possible to make a living as a 3D artist in Mexico. Fortunately, because it's... Uh, I think it's improving, for sure. Ah, qué onda, man, ya. Es que los nombres de Twitch, este, no, luego no me dan idea. Qué onda, man, cómo andas? Tuviste tu venganza con el Uli? Hey Wolf Guy, no, 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 este lleva como, en este stream apenas, no llevo, no sé cuánto tiempo llevo, llevo 40 minutos apenas y llevo estas tres piezas de aquí, este, este modelo lo empezamos, ay, no me acuerdo, hace como dos meses más o menos, pero es una semana le doy yo y luego la siguiente semana le da Oscar y así no la llevamos, entonces está como, no, no va muy apresurado, pero ahí la llevamos. No, si estuve viendo las fotos y quería llorar. Sí se ve que se puso muy muy bueno este año. Wow, ahí estás. So yeah, I don't know uh, this flashy feather wings things. I like them, and I I don't really want to think like. Um, too much about what they really are. Just kind of uh, make them bony and skinny and fleshy. Uh, 
particles in Mexico? Um, well, it depends. Um, yeah, it depends. I would say there's there's range for everything. Like, I think there's really um, there's a lot of courses and yeah, like um, workshops and stuff like that, which are really really cheap. Uh, but maybe like not proper like uh, degrees and there's also like from from fairly cheap to really expensive depending on on the type of school and I think I'm not sure but I think like also like public universities are also having like this at least a little bit of 3d with um, with like graphic design or architecture programs I'm not sure um, But yeah, I, I it, it depends. There's everything. Ah, no, el, no, el Buu ya tiene un rato que no lo doy. Este, ahorita quiero terminar antes el otro personaje, el ninja ese, pero eh, usualmente alterno. Entonces, una semana es en español con el ninja y luego otra semana es Paz de Sculpt en inglés. Y entonces ahí la llevo, por eso esta semana tocaba darle a este. Pero sí voy a seguirle la, la próxima semana con el otro. Workflow de Mari estaría bueno también, este, lo que pasa es que aún me falta para llegar a esa parte, todavía no he hecho ni los UVs ni, ni nada, entonces aún le falta un, un rato, pero sí lo voy a cubrir, sí lo quiero cubrir, trabajo con Mari todos los días en el estudio, entonces va a ser bastante sencillo. Take care Creepy, wish you the best and good luck man. Thanks for stopping by. Take care. Okay, I think these things work for now. Let's work on this one. Because I was feeling like this this part was really empty. It's just like a muscle and nothing else. And I'm actually Putting like another one here in the bottom, I don't know. It's fourth too much. Let's see. Um, es una laptop, estoy trabajando en una laptop de, de gamers este, Cuando me mudé a Canadá Tenía una máquina de escritorio en México Pero por logística y por comodidad y todo eso la dejé allá este, no, era, no era lo más cómodo traérmela Por seguridad de que no se fuera a maltratar en el viaje tan largo Y por los costos también Entonces la dejé por allá y me compré una laptop Acá, pero es una laptop de esas de gamers Es una MSI MSI Este Y tiene una tarjeta de video de Es una 1070 GTX El procesador es un i7 eh, Tiene 16 de RAM creo O sea es una máquina buena Pero no es nada espectacular Es como, es el estándar como más o menos de ahorita eh, Que que la mayoría de las máquinas para 3D funcionan. Y está chido porque... 
las máquinas de gamers eh, tienen muy buenas especificaciones para 3D. O sea, funcionan muy bien porque tienen procesador y, y RAM y, y la tarjeta de video, entonces está muy cool. ZBrush únicamente toma en cuenta procesador y RAM. La tarjeta de video no importa, entonces si lo que te interesa nada más es ZBrush, no te, no te preocupes por la tarjeta de video. Pero por ejemplo ahorita como están preguntando hace rato de Mari, este, para texturizar, Mari es 100% tarjeta de video casi. casi. Entonces, bueno no, no 100% pero o sea sí, sí es una parte muy importante. Entonces depende de cuál quiera hacer tu, tu workflow. ¿Qué onda Diego? ¿Cómo andas, man? Gerald, what's up? Ah, muchas gracias, Wolf. Sí, no sé cuándo sea. No sé cuánto falte. Este. Pero. Pero espero que sea pronto. De todos modos voy a estar ahí spameando Facebook siempre que tenga stream. Entonces, para que. Para que no se les pase, porque si sí me han estado preguntando también la parte de texturizado y estaría cool. Estaría chido ver eso. Me gusta también mucho, me gusta mucho esculpir, pero me gusta mucho también texturizar. Ok, so, um, some people were asking about um, texturing um, on my other character. On the other streams, I'm, I'm working like an, uh, on a ninja character by Alexei Bayura, the, the, the original artist for the design. And uh, I'm going to cover that, the texturing process for production uh, in Mari and Substance. But I don't know when. There's still, like, I'm still sculpting and finishing the modeling and all sorts of things, so it's still a while. It's a character for cinematics, so even more work, because those things are a beast of a project. gonna look for some references here to um, because sometimes I just get like an idea and I want to check something and just like a quick search By the way, I just uh, just remembered I have to save. So let's do that.
so I have three here and I think I'm just gonna put like a fourth one under so for that since I have like the layers turned on I have to turn them off first and what I'm gonna do is take this part turn off the acute curve because it's no longer useful reduce this part a little bit just a little bit Still, I have to merge all of this. I don't know. Since like, I'm, it might be kind of hard because the um, the meshes are really close together. So I might leave them separate and then just fix it in post. Um, like for concept, it's very easy to just like try and um, cover this up a little bit. Uh, it's, it's actually not, not that hard. So otherwise it would be like quite hard. So I, I might just leave them separate. It's important to have it like um, in symmetry. At least for these things. Hey Alan, come on. How's it going, man? gonna do the same thing okay uh, before mirroring let's just have the forward one and in this case this, this one's gonna be quite different than the other ones Okay, I don't have... Um, no, no, don't freeze anything. Okay, 
is just yeah making sure I have uh, just reduce the the wing like a little bit hey engine 3d yeah I never I think I never get these twitch names right what's up it's just like a smaller wing and I'm just gonna fuse this one here to make it look like it's the same surface Something like this. And I have to like rotate this. The cool thing about um, working loosely, like with Dynamesh or Sculptries, um, shapes the only thing that matters. Topology is really not an issue. I just have to be careful not to obstruct these like finger type things, which I have here. So I'm gonna try and use, like I'm gonna go all the way down to the first subdivision level so I can use um, move topology, in this case I'm only gonna move like this if I use like normal move brush I would only, like I would not only be moving this uh, like finger type things but also the mesh underneath like this which I don't want so um, move topology allows me to just um, take what's continuously um, what's like a continuity with topology so I just like grab this part and reduce it a little bit pretty easy stuff important to take into account of like all the contact points of different surfaces to make them look um, like they belong together in a way. Yep, I agree with Nasumi. That is very true. But 
but I've known a lot of people who are really stuck in Mexico and want to get out and can't because of the degree so yeah I won't say it's like one is better than the other it's just like the way it is but you said it exactly it's all about the work in the end Okay, so now I'm gonna um, mirror everything because the X I think I think these things actually work better than uh, what I imagine and I think they add a lot up to the to the silhouette because uh, I was feeling like this part was really lacking. And now the question is, I'm not sure about the head. I really like the shape of the head from the profile view. I really like the, the silhouette and the shapes and the volumes, but from the front, I don't know. It's still giving me like not the best, um, it's like, I feel it's like really squared in a way. I'm gonna try um, something with the transpose. I don't know if it will work. But we'll see. I don't remember if I already tried this, but let's let's go. Because it usually like takes a lot of uh, time between sessions, so I forget. Um, like the things I, I've already tried or not. So I'm just going to try and move these things. Uh, like the, the general eye area a little bit further out. Just to kind of break the the like the straight line and the to have like more of a curvish flow to it. That's the chicken I wouldn't dare to fry. <laughs> I don't know, maybe like the the future um, genetic engineering make it taste like extremely delicious even though it's super gross looking who knows could actually be better okay let's let's finish the, the post like that see if it works it looks super ridiculous from the front I know, like, it's it's really hard to imagine how can you even top things like roasted or fried chicken. There's a place um, really close from my apartment. Uh, well, fairly close. I went there last night for a, 
a friend's birthday and uh, it's like Portuguese chicken. It's amazing. I don't know if you guys have ever tried poutine, but it's like the the typical food from uh, Canada, but from especially from from Quebec. And it's uh, they have like this poutine with uh, with this chicken and Portuguese chorizo. It's amazing. It's really really good. I don't know if I like the the new eyes like this. I feel like he looks really weird. I don't know if that's a good thing. I'm going to revert the transpose for now. And keep it like this for now. And then if I think of something else, I'll try it again. But for now, I think it's... Because that's the thing. Um, you might be stuck in a, in, a, in in certain areas of the model or, or like certain stages of the process and then eventually something clicks and you get it but for now just we'll keep trying later you're vegan that's cool um, I have a, I have actually I have really few vegan friends. I have a couple, but not much. And um, so, do you like, for example, like to have like substitutes for chicken and, and meat, like stuff like that, or mostly um, like just natural vegetable-based foods? Because that I'm always curious about that. Like I know a lot of people are vegan and, and they like to try to replicate the taste of meat or chicken which I totally understand like it's it's really good and I understand the reasons for for being vegan so I think it's pretty interesting um, to think things like that I really like what Oscar did here with uh, all the details in the face I think it looks really nice I'm gonna continue um, like detailing See what I can come up with. Turn the lazy mouse a little bit. Maybe not that much. Also, like another cool thing, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and um, they were talking about like uh, lab-grown meat, and like if 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 people would change to to lab-grown meat instead of uh, factory farmed meat or or even like normal farmed meat, just meat in general, like uh, lab-grown meat, like uh, ground muscle tissue, and I think it like it was a really interesting discussion of um, like the ethical implications and uh, the taste of it and I don't know I think if if the thing itself comes to be like similar in taste and texture and nutritional value uh, of the of the real thing I think I might try it and, and even change it I, why not What do you mean with that? Oh, okay. I don't know, I haven't tried it. 
like either of those things. But um, I think I think the argument for ethical raising of animals and like the the issue with factory farming it's a real thing it's a real concern and um, I think it's really hard because we're just so many people in the world so I don't know I'm not saying no completely from now to lab grown meat like if it just tastes like the real thing why not but that's the thing I don't I don't really think it will taste like that. Who knows? Maybe we'll have like just sacks of meat without brain or with a, like a very basic brain for just like vital functions without a real like a real nervous system or, or like conscience. So we'll just be like sacks of meat for human consumption. That's also like, is that ethical to do? Is that um, something desirable? I don't know. But it's interesting to think about those things. trying here to like respect a little bit of the hierarchy of details but like maybe having them transition easily to this part without breaking too much Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting because I don't imagine like I, I cannot imagine like for example like a chicken leg grown in a lab. Like I, I don't think it's going to happen like that or like a steak. Because for that to happen you need to have like for example let's say a ribeye it has a really defined structure of the muscle and fat and like it has this this uh, particular shape. I don't think you can replicate that in a lab. I think that has to come from a, from a real animal, as you say. And so, like lab-grown meat might be this just gross-looking thing that just tastes good. Uh, just like organic tissue um, that's equivalent to like muscle, the same properties of a muscle, but just just not a real muscle. I don't know. Uh, this hint, uh, yeah, it's Oscar did that last stream. It's just a, uh, it's just poly paint with uh, spotlight. He just projected it on a plane from uh, like with a texture with spotlight. He just painted on top. It's pretty cool actually. Like it looks really, really nice. It makes it makes the chicken look like a bomb. Yep, no 
worries. I want this thing to look like um, a little bit like folded loose tissue in a way. working there, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the angle. Might be. Longer question. I was making a couple of cartoon characters, and in the end, I have pretty things. Uh huh. Okay. Why do you have? Okay, let me. Uh. Were you doing the cartoon characters like with Dynamish or Sculptries or something like that? Uh, like a like a sculpting type of mesh? Because uh, that that's uh, that's actually something that happens a lot. I'm going to clone this tool to show something, and I'm going to delete all the layers in this clone tool. Because, yeah, that's something really, um, okay, it's it's fine, it's fine that you use the Dynamish. The thing is, you're going to have to retopo it, but you can do like a, if, if you, if you only want to pose it, you can use Siri Mesh, it's fine. If you want to animate it and rig it, you have to use uh, retopology by hand. You have to do it the manual retopology uh, by hand because um, 
it has to be a certain way depending on the type of character you need certain rules for the topology to work in animation but if it's just for posing inside of zbrush i think you can get away with just using c remesh um this one here in geometry c remesh uh, but let me explain what's happened to you so i have like five subdivisions here which is 9.147 million uh, points then just use uh, c remesh it's fine but let me let me show you uh, what's going on so like you have 9.147 million active points if i subdivide one more time i'm gonna have like around 36.5 million active points and it still works fairly well like it's not like super laggy or anything um it's also not super light but it's it's workable and the thing that happens with ZBrush is that I'm gonna um, duplicate the subtool and for this one I'm actually going to um, resist uh, delete lower subdivisions so in this case the 36.5 million active points that I have is my only subdivision it's pretty dense what happens with the first one show you with this one if I ever try to move things it's super slow. and this is not workable at all and it's like really hard to do zoom and everything really like anything that I want to do it's like a pain so what happens is like you, uh, you have a, like a super dense mesh and yeah no no worries it's actually a pretty common problem happens all the time when you're uh, when you're just starting and uh, a lot of my students also had this issue all the time so like you lost the subdivision levels or you don't have any for some reason the thing is ZBrush has to deal with this whole number 36.5 million at once like all the time constantly so you're you're not giving it time to uh, to rest um, so in this case like with the original tool I still have six subdivisions so if you notice navigation is much faster than with this one and the thing is when ZBrush like ZBrush is not a, a real 3d program it's like projection um, of a 3d object in 2d space that's why it's like 2.5d um, it's it's kind of weird but the thing is can you guys notice like when I'm uh, rotating or moving anything ZBrush takes the model and uh, actually shows me like a lower subdivision while I'm moving the thing and then it builds it back up it's super useful and actually necessary to have subdivisions in ZBrush because of this reason like if you lose subdivision like for example I'm, I'm rotating this thing and ZBrush has to calculate much less polygons for the movement or, or actually for the projection to show on the canvas um, Cuídate mucho men este, Cuídate mucho Rich Gracias por, por pasar a, a saludar un rato Nos vemos Que estés muy chido ya Al rato luego cotorreamos sobre, sobre el pixel atlas men Cuídate Ok, so Yeah, whenever I'm moving the camera Or moving the model um, ZBrush lowers the resolution so the movement actually has to deal with less the projection with less resolution and then when I stop it builds it back up so that's the thing you need subdivisions uh, when you're working with really dense meshes that's why for example in what is this oh no this is the proxy for the transpose that's why, for example, with stuff like this, like I, I really, it's really low. It's barely like 64,000, uh, not even 100,000. So it's fairly easy to work with this. It has two levels of subdivision. Um, that's why always when working with Dynamesh, Dynamesh is only useful up to a certain point. And it's, it's always 
when it when you work like from okay like every every model or every character you work on has like a hierarchy of shapes and you go you go from like the bigger one to the, to the smaller one from the par primary shapes secondary shapes and tertiary shapes so with the first ones the, the primary shapes you always have to work in lower subdivisions and that's why uh, and that's where dynamesh is, is actually really useful after that after you've defined the, the primary shapes you don't really need dynamesh anymore or or like sculptures pro if you're working like for for production or for a clean topology or clean geometry so in that case you just need like a, a zero mesh the workflow that i always use when doing this type of concept sculpting is start like for example let's say depends on, on what i'm doing but i might start with with c-spheres or with dynamesh or with sculptures work the main shapes up to a point and once the main shapes are already defined i would just use the the c remesh remesh the whole thing have workable topology for sculpting like this one so here oscar did the c remesh and this is like it's not the best topology but it's pretty good for what we need so it's it's working for for uh, sculpting it's nice it's enough and then uh, just keep subdividing this project the details back onto it keep subdividing keep sculpting and that's it and it's much easier and much useful to um, yeah to work on so that's the thing just uh, be aware of that and, and you're gonna be fine always always keep your subdivision levels it's really important Okay, so I'm just gonna delete this too, so I, so I don't keep like using space uh, or resources. Just go back to this one. For example, in this case, just uh, 64 of resolution for the for the sphere. Um, the thing is, you should be using Dynamesh for merging pieces together, but at the very beginning of of the workflow. If you're still using Dynamesh, like, because people tend to make this very common mistake. I'm gonna show you what's up. I have this mesh here, the, the main body, which has clean topology, clean-ish topology. No, it's fine. Don't worry, it's, it's actually fine. Um, I actually like to to explain things for some reason, um, and and this this type of questions came out all the time when I was a teacher, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, like I have this this mesh here with uh, clean topology for sculpting and subdivision levels. Okay, and then I have these wings here, these wings things who also have like um, clean topology. I mean, no, not clean topology, subdivision levels, but they started from Dynamesh. So let's say I want to, to, to merge and, and um, unify this to the main body mesh. So what I would do is first, okay, I'm going to save so I don't um, do anything stupid, like a test version of this. What I would do is take the, the wings 
and merge them first with the main body. So like merge down. Okay. And you're gonna notice something first, first right away. Like since these things don't have the same number of subdivision levels, I immediately lost subdivision levels. Did you notice that? Like right now the body had five and the wing had two. And then when I merged them, since it, it, it cannot subdivide the mesh for me, it made the, the original body lost to lose three subdivision levels. So it now has like two, which is not good because now it's slower. That's the first thing. So I now have this uh, mesh here together in the same subtool, just different polygroups, which it, it means I can uh, use DynaMesh. So let's say I want to keep the enough resolution. So I would put like 256 resolution and then just do DynaMesh. It will ask if I want to like freeze the subdivision levels, but I put no. And that's the thing. It did the DynaMesh, but I lost completely all my subdivision levels. And I suspect that that's what you're doing. So now, for example, these things are already merged and I can now sculpt them um, and integrate them. No problem. It's, it's like, it's merged. But now I lost all my subdivision levels. It's really important once you have subdivision levels, you cannot use DynaMesh because it, this will happen. And with my students, I had like all the time, they were trying to add more pieces after they've already done the Siri Mesh. And so they were constantly losing the, the subdivision levels with DynaMesh. DynaMesh is really not just like a magic tool for just adding more pieces uh, over and over until like you're satisfied. Um, it has to be used at the beginning because because of this thing like the resolution with dynamesh is it's really more useful to to be used like at lower levels instead of higher levels and um like if, if you were just working with this in a single subdivision level just like feel free to keep adding as many pieces and things as you want but once you have already subdivision levels like dynamesh is it's it's gone it's out of the question at least for that character. So I hope that helps. If you're stuck with this, you have two options. Um, okay, no, that you basically just have one option. Like your option is um, duplicate the mesh, the main mesh. Um, get a Siri mesh on the on the duplicate, um, like a retopology remesh with clean geometry and project the details back to it while subdividing it. That's basically your only option. And that's the thing um, um, that you will get like your details back into the mesh. Exactly, like if you add something later, uh, like for example, let's say here. Okay, no, this is, let me open again the, the original one before I merge this. What's happening? Okay. But I thought I had more here. Okay, yeah, this is this one. I don't know what happened really here. Um, yeah, so let's say I want to really add this to um, to the mesh. My only option really, um, without destroying that, is take this, um, for example, what I would do is just take them to Maya, export this mesh, take them to Maya, export these high ver high res versions, and manually retopologize them and try to merge them Try to unify and connect them to the main mesh. And then go back to ZBrush and project the details for these pieces back onto this thing in a new mesh. It's, it's gonna be like a completely new mesh. If you have UVs, you're gonna have to redo the UVs. That's why the, the I don't think you have UVs because you, you only want to post it in, in ZBrush, but if you, if you do, like just in case, 
that's why the general workflow for production is very different than the, the workflow for, for concept sculpting. Um, while the sculpting tools are the same, you can really do the, the same things while working with the mesh. And uh, you have to be really careful with that because a lot of things don't translate exactly the same way. Can I project detail from many subtools to one retoupled mesh? Yes, but like, um, yes you can, but they have to be in the, no wait, no you can. I think when you project something, for example, let's say I duplicate this and I have um, a new mesh, which I, I, I see remeshed, it's going to, and, I, and if I do like a, project something, project all, it's going to project everything that's visible. So just put like even the stuff that you might not like. For example, let's say I forgot to turn off this piece here. It's also going to project that. So be careful. Just let just leave the the meshes or the pieces you're absolutely sure you want to be projected and that's it. It's actually really easy. Just you have to be careful and then after a while, it's gonna be just like second nature to you. Um, you're not gonna be having these these problems anymore. So I know it was like a long explanation, but I, I really wanted to cover that because it's a really common issue. And um, yeah, just be careful with that. Hope it helps. Okay, let's continue with this. going to do sort of like the same thing kind of not exactly but um, try to do like uh, this type of wing things here as well yeah no worries I hope it, it helps yeah planning is really important I'm, I'm telling you because I've had to um, I'm really not good at planning, so I had a lot of uh, headaches um, back in the day while trying, while learning the workflow and, and doing my first characters. I always, always messed up with something and I had to redo a lot of stuff all the time. So it's, it happens, don't worry. I think 64 is too much. I'm just gonna use 32, which was I think I was the original resolution that I used before.
like for, for example I need to um, focus on like in the the main shapes first and then going for the details I really like to use the move uh, with the Aku curve the move brush because it does things like instead of just moving everything like this it will actually like pull like pinching so it's really cool to come up with interesting ways of doing like corners of stuff Turned off the um, edit mode by accident. The T. So I have my brushes on the numbers 1, 2, 8. And I want to press 5 and press the T by accident. stuff a little bit here I think this might be too big. This type of wing things.
Yeah, so right now I'm just looking from afar. See if I like what I have. I didn't have symmetry, so let's use symmetry. create like a bony angle here and then just have like the, the tissue just pass this these sort of things like you only discover them after a while like not necessarily at the moment you're making them so it's always super important to look like to spin them all around and look at it from different angles, look at it from, from different perspectives and um, to see that the silhouette works. That's super important. Like I see a lot of um, beginners and it's I, it's really easy to, to, to only do that. Like when people are starting, um, you have like your front view and then you sculpt things and you have like your left view or side view and then you sculpt things and your top view and, and you sculpt your things and then the, the model ends up looking like super squared because you're only sculpting from the orthographic views super important to turn off perspective to turn on perspective sorry turn it on and uh, yeah spin it around sculpt it from from all possible angles So I like I like for example this type of curve here. So I might uh, make it continue into the thing here. If I ever decide to do a remesh of this thing, I don't know. If I ever decide to do it, it's gonna be messy. Because yeah, have a lot of stuff here. No, I am actually, I am with, uh, I'm sculpting with perspective on. If I turn it off, it looks super flat. And I, I, I was, I started with perspective off, but I turned it on like uh, 20 minutes into the stream or something. I don't remember. But yeah, it's, it's, um, the, the, the correct way. I don't know if that's the correct way, but the, the way I use perspective or not perspective, like orthographing stuff like that, it's if I want to align something or I really want to make sure that the certain shapes are achieved, I would turn perspective off. Um, for example, working with um, like an image plane or um, moving stuff around, like it's more easy, it's, uh, it's easier to, to just take um, everything you want to move, like for example, let's say this thing, and to know exactly the distance it's moving to, like for example, if I have perspective, the camera angle and the distortion of the shape can throw me off a little bit, exactly where I want it to be, but perspective solves that problem. Like, you know how, for example, 3 Max or Maya or other 3D programs have a grid for when you're, uh, when you're in the orthographic views. That grid is exactly for that, for just like, uh, placement of things or, or measurements or distances and um, that's the the way that I would use no perspective but for when I'm sculpting I always turn perspective on because you need it to uh, to correctly view the, the shapes also like I, I just remember but when I first started like let's say I wanted to do like a head so I would sculpt the head and then 
take it outside of ZBrush into something like Maya, for example. And then I would look at a head in Maya and it would, it would look super weird. Um, like not at all how it looked in ZBrush. And the reason for that is I was sculpting the head to look correctly. Um, like I would take, I, would, I don't know how to explain that. I would, I would sculpt in ZBrush for the head to look as my reference. But since I, I was working like in, in orthographic view, not in perspective, whenever I, like if I, if I were to turn perspective on, it would look all deformed. But the thing is, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was working in orthographic and I, I something I, I still hadn't learned. So happened a couple of times. And then I was like, no, perspective on. I actually much prefer like, there's some things from ZBrush that I wish other three programs had, like the camera thing, to just be able to snap the camera with shift and to, to transition between perspective and, and orthographic just with a click. It's so much faster than what other programs have. Like for modeling, I don't, I don't know for other things like rigging or animation or anything, I think it doesn't really matter. But for modeling, um, instead of like having the, the option to just snap the camera with shift, I think it's amazing. I would love, love to have that. But it's, it's cool that it's in ZBrush, at least. I know, I know, like, oh man, Blender. There's so much things to, to say about the program. I used it for a couple of months like for six months or so, a little bit more, I don't remember exactly, uh, for a project I was working on. And there are things I really love about Blender and some things I really hate about Blender. Um, for example, modeling and UVs are really good, really good in Blender. I really like the, it has the modifiers like from, from th not exactly the same ones, but the, the idea of, of the modifiers. That's also like in 3D Max. Uh, the tools are really good. The, um, once you get past like the navigation thing with the, the other click, with the right click, um, or you can change that, but like once you stop uh, fighting the program, it's pretty cool. Um, but the things I actually like completely despised Oh wait, so also thing, oh, another thing that I, I like about Blender is the matcaps. It's something that I really like about ZBrush, that it has the matcaps. And also like for the UVs, it's really cool. Uh, Blender had like really good UV tools. Um, but like for example, the, the UV editor in Maya, it's actually really good as well. And other specialty UV uh, mapping tools like UV layout um, are actually making like I don't have to use Blender for that, but the modeling, it's, it's actually pretty good. But the things I completely hated were the sculpting and the retopo tools in Blender. Oh my God, they were so bad. And especially like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I always try to be a hundred percent honest when I say things like, I, I know ZBrush has a lot of uh, like not so great things. It's not like I, blindly praise ZBrush or any other program. ZBrush has a, a ton of stuff that just isn't on par with any other software. For example, like it's not a, a very good texturing software, for example, and the layers kind of suck, but it's really good at sculpting and having coming, like coming from ZBrush um, and going into Blender for sculpting things, it was, oh man, it was so bad. It was so bad. I, I could not do it. I struggled a lot and, um, I mean, in the end I could do it, but it took me way longer and a lot of pain and <laughs> blood, sweat and tears. And also like the, the retopple tools are not, they're not super bad, but I don't think they're great either. But especially the sculpting, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, but I have a couple of friends at work who um, who use Blender for um, 
for like modeling uh, certain things. And I really like the idea of Blender, and I hope it um, it gains traction because I think it's it's a uh, uh, like a right balance to have in the industry, you know. Uh, things like open source and uh, and and communities like like the blender community i think it's really useful and really helpful for the 3d community in general and um but they have to to have a, a good product to start with like it's it, it cannot be just uh blind fanboyism i think it has to actually be good and i think blender has a a really good potential to be that just has to fix some things and um, and I don't know like yeah I've, I've been hearing about uh, 2.8 so I hope it's it's uh, it's better than than what I had before the thing is also like another um, point that I, I want to make it's uh, Outside of modeling and maybe UV mapping, nobody really uses Blender for production, in, in like in any studio, because I don't think the cost of having the whole staff learn Blender outweighs the the benefit of the price or like the the program being free, um, and also. Pipelines are, are already established. Um, it's really hard. Like it, I think it's really good for smaller studios, indie studios, or freelancers. But like really big productions, I don't really see it happening soon. Like even ZBrush, I'm actually surprised because ZBrush is also a pain to to integrate to a pipeline. I've seen that because. Um, it's like it has to only run on Windows or or Mac. You cannot use ZBrush on Linux, for example. So um, the the integration of pipeline tools for ZBrush to coordinate with other programs it's really hard. You always have to do it manually. Like it, it's not actually I think a, a very production pipeline friendly software, ZBrush. But it's so good at what it does. Like it's so good at sculpting. It's incredibly useful for uh, displacement maps and uh, sculpting uh, details and stuff like that. That people use it despite of the shortcomings, and that's why that's why I think it's it's the only reason. Like it's really good for sculpting. Otherwise, if it was mediocre at best, I don't think it's gonna be it was going to be used at all. Oh no, I agree. I, I also hated Retopo in ZBrush. Um, I the first time I learned Retopo in ZBrush was with uh, C spheres. There's like a really weird workflow. You create a C sphere and then you re you like um, change the topology of the main. Ma I, it's, it's so weird, and it didn't really work for me. And then the topology brush came out, and it's good. I would say it's useful, but like for example, you don't have the the ability to just smooth or relax the mesh and that's a huge huge uh, no for me it's useful for certain things like for smaller props or smaller pieces i would sometimes use it to create like uh, basic um, pieces quickly but if i'm going to sculpt something by hand i used to use uh, topogon but now quadra for maya it's really good and that's the thing i use now and uh, yeah, so like it always comes down for me to um, what option is the best for the thing that I have to do. And I agree, ZBrush retopology is actually is actually also not super good. Oh, hey Alkili Den, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Yeah, it's uh, I don't remember the name of the film. Um, but I think I saw uh, something uh, on Facebook. Uh, there's, there's like I remember one of the first. Um, I remember a, a, like a, several years back watching the film Sintel 
by also like the by the Blender for the foundation like a of a girl with a dragon. I thought that was really cool, and um, there's also like a really cool project being uh, done in in Mexico right now in Mexico City, also 100% in Blender. That's the pro that's the the, the project that I worked on. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to spoil anything. Just I'm just gonna say it's amazing what's what's being done there. It's just that um, that's the thing. Like not many people know how to use the program. Not many people uh, have expertise on like uh, developing tools or, or plugins for that. So it slows the production down in a way. I hope. I really hope it gets there, and I really hope the community around it grows because like I said it's really it's a really useful voice inside of the community like a counterweight in a way so it's cool it, it needs more variety the industry I completely agree <laughs> hola thank you thank you so much Alki okay cool welcome yeah next gen hold on I think I saw it on Facebook this week yep yeah actually I think uh, Ashley who's also a streamer uh, here in the channel in ZBrush Live I think she also worked in the movie um, like as a concept designer for characters like she I think she used ZBrush but she mentioned something about the movie being done in Blender yep yeah, it's actually looking pretty good. I remember now. Um, and also, another thing that I like about Blender is the cycles render. It's really, really nice. I didn't have a lot of time to to play around with it, but it's it's really powerful the things you can do with cycles. Um, yeah, Blender with PBR it's also really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it hurts nobody. Uh, maybe maybe some companies, but uh, the, the, the user, the artists, only get uh, benefited by Blender being good. So I really hope uh, with each release it gets better and better because my first expression uh, experience with, with Blender was mixed. A lot of good things and, and a lot of bad things. So I really, really want Blender to, to improve on the, on the shitty things and uh, become a great software for for production use nice that's a cool yeah pbr i had to I, I used it a little bit more and it's really good pbr is really good and also like the texturing it's i think it's decent uh i personally prefer a lot uh like mari i really really like the the control you have with mari um, even like for example, Substance Painter, even though it like has like the the smart materials and the smart masks and stuff like that, I don't I don't love how it takes a little bit of the control away from you, and I like how Mari it's like hundred percent your fault or your merit, whatever, however the texture looks, and uh, Mari is just like so deep. For texture painting it's insane so that that's like my cup of tea right now but um, I tried the texturing in blender as well and it's it's not bad I, I liked it I think it works for for you what you try um, yeah it has a free version uh, I think I think it limits the um, the resolution of the UDIMs you can have to like 4k I don't remember I have to check but it is there is like a free uh, indie version or student version or something like that. You you should check it out. It's really good. It's a really good software. Just like ZBrush is a standard for sculpting in the industry, Mari is a standard for texturing. Yeah, like that's true. Like I said, uh, the more options we have, the better. The more viable options, I would say. Like, not just options. We need, like, good options. And uh, there's con constantly new software coming. And for some reason, like, Blender has survived. So that's a good sign. And the philosophy, I really like it because 
in a way, I think the, the Blender community is really similar to the ZBrush community. Um, it's like really centered around the, the specific tool they use or we use. Um, but also like focused also in the like in the end product. I don't know how to say it. And like for example, Blend Blender is free now. Uh, but ZBrush, it's also not super expensive. Like you pay for the license just once and all the updates are free basically for the rest of well so far have been free. I, I bought ZBrush in 2013 and it's been like five years of free upgrades and uh, the development team it's really close to the community so i see both communities like really in a similar way i'm very excited for um for like the tools um in the near future because i think there's just some amazing things uh possible now and it's just like I don't know. Okay, so many messages. Let me read this. Hey, so Max, what's up? Pablo Vasquez in the Blender Institute, representing the Spanish speaking community. Nice. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, Nesumi, we all wonder that. I can promise you. Yeah, uh, Substance, it's amazing. But like I said, I don't hate, I don't love, 100% love the, the smart materials and smart mask things. I like, I mean, I really like them. But I think it's a really easy way to to uh, make some people lazy not everybody of course but I've seen some lazy texturing in substance because of that and some things you wouldn't have in Mari like in Mari you have to do everything by yourself so um, and yeah I agree also like um, let's say for example I've seen it just doesn't work for for more than a few items I've seen uh, assets in production with like an average of 50 UDIMs and let's say some environments even like more than a thousand UDIMs and so I had like a, a friend of mine was she was working on a on a on an environment and she had like a thousand four hundred UDIMs so imagine having that with with just an, in Substance Painter it's just like not not happening never so yeah they should I don't know, they should just like try to improve that, I guess. Um, I have a couple of friends from Mexico who went to Amsterdam for the Blender conference. Uh, I think it was last year. Yeah, it was last year. And um, they presented the project and it's going well. I hear really cool things, so I'm hopeful as well, like for Blender. I really, I really hope it grows and it it's uh i don't ever um discard the the idea of using any software if it works it works yeah for sculpting it's it's a no-brainer it's zbrush everywhere and i mean that could be seen like as a bad thing because if you are the only option, it could be very easy for, for Pixelagic to say, okay, let's just not update ZBrush any anytime, uh, like anymore ever in the future. It would be very easy for them to just like stop caring because they basically have the whole market. But I don't know why, but they, they haven't done that. Like um, I was on the beta test for, for uh, version 2018 and you really see the care they have for the product they really want to improve all the time they really want the feedback from the community they really they're really concerned about making a great product so yeah seabridge is number one for that reason i think they, they haven't stopped caring about it 
So that's that's really cool. Hey Stefan, um, you can you can check out my Gumroad. Just uh, uh, type in uh, gumroad.com slash Jose Rosales Art. Just the the exact same tag uh, for of my other networks. And I have the matcap and my interface um, just for free. Just grab it. Feel free to um, to take the matcap. Yeah, one K Udims are uh, like I don't. Know. I remember watching um, a production talk at Seagraph of Chappie with Image Engine, and uh, they remember. I, I remember they they showed like the the whole pipeline of the asset for Chappie, and it had uh, something around 500 Udims, which for a character is a lot. It's basically an environment in other in other productions. So. Yeah, that's Mari. It's basically the only program that can do that. Hey, Alki, um, Udims uh, are like um, if you see the UV space, I don't know if you noticed, but like uh, whenever you do uh, UVs for a model, you always uh, try to pack them in the in the zero to one space, for example, like you have the main axis, the origin, and then you have um, the x axis and the y axis, and you pack them in the in the first quadrant. Um, that is, if you're only using like one texture map per asset, Th UDIMs allow you to use more than one texture set. So, let's say a character for film has to have a lot of resolution on the textures. One 4K map is not going to be enough. Even one 8K map is not going to be enough. Even 10 4K maps are not going to be enough. So um, the the UV editors usually have like extra spaces, and in the X axis and Y axis. So the way you pack the textures, you can have, for example, um, there's a lot of ways you can do that. But let's say you 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 can divide assets by um, by mesh. So let's say if I were, if you were to model myself, you have like, for example, my glasses. The the UVs would be in one quadrant, and maybe uh, I don't know, my clothes would be in another quadrant, and then my face would be in another quadrant. So each quadrant would have like a different texture with different resolution, and then um, it's very easy to uh, to have a lot of, of textures for uh, one simple asset. So very complicated. Um, models with, with a lot of pieces or a lot of like, let's say a character with a lot of accessories or uh, clothing or armor stuff like that every different part of the character ha can have its own 4k texture so that's why just google um, like for example chappy udims and I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll find something uh, like a visual representation of how the udims are, are distributed and the really cool thing about Mari is that you can load a lot of UDIMs and you can work basically on like 500 texture sets of the same character and it also has like really cool um, and powerful uh, procedurals and uh, it also has like a node system so yeah Mari's Mari's a beast it's a really cool program that's why I said like for example ZBrush has the polypaint which is pretty cool um, and you can do amazing stuff with it like Chris Costa just textured uh, a realistic portrait just with the uh, polypaint, and and it's really impressive. But I'm I'm coming more from the the perspective of like a production environment where you need to share assets between departments and you need to have like an established pipeline and you need to have some uh, certain like um, processes running. So. In those cases, you would use software that allow you to do that. So that's why. It's really interesting how tonight's stream, uh, all the talk has been about production while I'm sculpting just a dirty concept with no regards for topology whatsoever. But it's cool. Like th These things are really cool to talk about. Yeah, he's he's on another level completely. That guy's insane. 
I'm actually really excited because he's going to be in the, at the summit this year. He's going to do a talk and I really want to meet the guy. Yeah, exactly. Udims allow you to pack the UV islands outside of the 0 to 1 space. Exactly. So even like, for example, you can have, let's say, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, imagine one of the Blizzard cinematics or one of the Blur Studio cinematics. Um, and they have like a really cool character, like the face. And it's, uh, there's a shot in the cinematic, like a super close up of the face. And, uh, and the resolution of the whole thing, the, like the video, it's uh, full HD. So in that case, the face can be divided into more than one or two UDIMs. It doesn't have to be just the face in one UDIM. You can you can like split it in even like 10 UDIMs of and have like 10 4K textures or like four or five 8K textures. And then the detail really, really pops out. And um, it you don't have to be concerned about like the seams the UV seams because you can paint it as like you can paint it both in, in UV space and in 3D space and uh, there's a lot of mapping techniques uh, like 3 planner which projects from X, Y and C uh, procedurals with nodes and so like it's really uh, UV seams are not a, an issue at all with Mari. Thank you, Fish. Uh, glad you like it. I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, try new things here. I really love sculpting. Like, it's it's really weird because I really like the whole production pipeline, and I've I've been like I've been learning it uh, a lot in the past few years. I really like the whole process of creating an asset for production, but I also just love like just sculpting things like just take a sphere and sculpt whatever i think it's really fun and i really enjoy it and um and if i could all like if i could do it all, all day it would be amazing um maybe not forever because i i also like like i said the, the production side of things but to just be a sculptor would be super nice Then why not packing it all in one quadrant, but using 32K textures? Um, for one, like for example, images, like uh, textures are actually much more heavy than uh, than than objects, like than, than meshes, 3D meshes. Textures are usually the heaviest things. Like for example, when a video game gets remade and it's like a HD remaster or something, it's usually just increased resolution for the textures the model usually stay the same unless it's something like for example uh, the new Shadow of the Colossus which is completely redone if it's something like uh, I don't know Metal Gear Solid 3 which was like had like an HD version it's just the textures uh, redone so the textures are usually super heavy and 32k it's too much um, it's it's much more manageable for the artist for the program and for the production to have several 4k textures than 132k 32k is just too much and um, there's really also not a use for that unless you're gonna do like a super i don't know like i'm thinking for example like a a mapping of um, the surface of mars and uh with a super high-res camera that captures all the detail and it's used for like scientific research I can see that happening but the thing is it's like 4k televisions you need to have like a huge size television to really appreciate 4k like if I have like a laptop with 4k it doesn't really matter because the the size doesn't really let me appreciate like my human eye is not capable of noticing the difference between just like full HD and 4k 
it's the same thing like 32k is just too much and you wouldn't even see the difference between a 4k or an 8k with a 32k it's just too much you would need to have um yeah i don't know like i don't see any reason for i've never used a 32k ever and uh i don't think like i don't know all the productions of course that might be not the case but i think even 16k it's it's rare to, to find so 32 i don't think it's like it's possible to have in my in, in mari a 32k texture but i don't know why Try and make this uh, more curved. Let's turn off the act curve here. Creepy chicken. Let's do the mirror thing. Now in this case, I also want to scope here a little bit. Um, <laughs> hey Nezumi, take care. Yeah, it would be super cool. Uh, it was glad to see you here and, and glad you stopped by to, uh, to chat for a little bit. Take care and good luck. With the uh, with that scope, <laughs> those KFC chickens. Yeah, I know. You're welcome, Alki. No worries. Hope it helps, and um, hope it's useful as well. Oh wow, okay. Good night and uh, take care and hopefully see you around again in another stream. Buenas noches. Thanks. Yeah, I will post it when it's when it's done. Um, I'm suspecting it's not gonna be much longer. Maybe a couple more sessions, and then we'll just publish it. Hopefully, we'll let you guys know. I'm gonna be spamming all the social networks with it. Cuyate, estás muy bien. I'm gonna need more resolution here. But I realized I have um, more subdivision levels that I forgot about.
Oh, it's looking like kind of dirty here right now, but it's probably not going to be noticed um, in the end. I'll just make here like um, cool shapes. gonna have to just here um, scope something to unify everything like a whole a single whole thing Trying to finish some stuff here. Um, oh no. Didn't have the geometry, uh, I mean, sym symmetry on.
Okay, guys. I think um, I'll leave it, leave it at that for today. Um, I'll continue to refine these things. Cause like the the top ones, I think look pretty good, but the bottom ones still need um, a bit more work. This kind of mutant wings things, and I also like wanted to add more details here. And I I don't know what Oscar's gonna do with this, so I think it's gonna gonna be like. Um, this for now and as always as always thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for uh, watching and, and commenting and participating and just uh, having a good time it's always super nice to catch up with everybody um, take care all of you next week I'll be sculpting um, on my character on my project um, it's a character for production it's gonna be in Spanish but feel free to join it's uh it's always nice to see everybody take care guys